The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 20th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. But please send it early and inside that subject heading if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ Composite, both trading slightly lower. Otherwise, the other U.S. indices are trading the upside with the semis being flat. The Dow's up 171. The S&P's up 9. The Russell's up 11. That's a half percent, two-tenths, and six-tenths of a percent. And nine-tenths for the uh, semis are up 132 points. Gold's up $12 now, a six-tenth move. Uh, 36 cents or one and a half percent for silver. Lights we crude up 17 pennies, trade out 90.65. Natural gas back 10 cents, a 30 year treasury. Printed out 118.25, that's up 18 ticks. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge Bank Corp up 12 bucks, 25% move there. John Deere up nine bucks, 2%. Lululemon, nine bucks, a little over 2%. United Rentals, seven and a half bucks, almost 2%. And Digital Transformation Opportunity, a 55% move there. To the downside, it's a uh, what is that? Beige, beige limited sponsor, down 15 bucks, 7%. Zebra Technologies, that one I can read, down about 5% or $12. Check Group, down 6 bucks, 90%. Celsius Holdings, up about 3%. That's about a $6 move. And Lind PLC, off about uh, 5 buckaroonies out there. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. Let's begin by taking a look at that market breadth out there. And we're going to see we've got mixed up market breadth. What I mean by that is here is the NASDAQ 100. Bullish for the 60, bullish for the 240, bullish bullish for the weekly and just slightly bullish right or slightly bearish right now for the daily when I say slightly I mean 23 instruments above profile 28 below so for the most part we've got bullish conditions for the Nasdaq 100 at least as of 11.09 for the S&P 500 it's a different message it's bearish 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 weekly daily 240 and 60 now the 60 minute chart shows 155 above 166 below but we've got basically what is set up conditions for a choppy market. Now, you would have expected us to have choppy market conditions coming into a Fed minute um, a day here where we're going to find out whether they're going to hold, reduce or raise rates out there. And so you would expect that we would have this choppy kind of market. Well, market breadth is also confirming that which we would expect. Now, because it is Fed rate day, Fed rate cut, raise or what have you. What I do have here is this the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. And over the last 10 years, this shows Fed rate change. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a Fed rate change. What I don't have an opportunity to do here is uh, pick out a, when I take a look at the options that I've got, this is using the Seasonix platform. We've got Fed rate change, Fed rate cut, Fed rate hike. Well, we don't have no rate change out there. So um, this is the potential for a rate change. Maybe, you know, so this basically says that we move lower into that day. And then for the next four days, the uh, S&P 500 will move lower. That's been the historical pattern 
over a 10 year period. Let me see. Can I, well, I can't really do 25 years, um, 15 years. Really the same kind of pattern set up for a 15 year period as well. So that's what we've got from a seasonal standpoint. What else do we have out here? Uh, let's go take a look at the NQ. Let's switch panels out here. Take a look what's going on on our intraday charts for the NQ since they've got mostly bullish conditions out there. Let's go see if we can identify any resistance levels. So we take a look at the NQ on a daily time frame. We know we're trading below profile levels. That suggests lower price. We take a look at the five-hour time frame chart. Five-hour time frame chart. Let's see if it completed an A to B equals CD to downside. I'll draw on the A to B point, and I'm just simply going to move this over to the C point out there. Let's see if this, in fact, uh, formed. It did. No, it didn't. It really didn't get down there. I mean, the projection was about 15,186. Price got down to about 15,248. So you're still an A to B equals CD uh, to the downside. What we know right now about the five-hour time frame chart is that resistance is where those sellers are located, and that's at the top of the profile. And the top of its current profile is up at the 15,430 level. You can see how that acted as resistance. Now, support is down at 15,309. Let's continue looking at the NQ charts out here. On a four-hour time frame chart, what do we have? Actually, I see a potential for a, a to B equals CD to the downside pattern that could be forming different than the one we looked at on the five hour time frame chart. The two hour chart has a road momentum indicator top. So it's got a nice bottom with price consolidating with inside profiles. 15,422 is resistance. That's the top of the profile. Price right now testing support, the red oscillator and change line. On a two hour basis, and this next candle here is going to complete at 12 noon. If price were to close below that red oscillator and change line, 15,355, that would suggest a further move lower into the support structured area of its bullish profile at 15,267 to 15,306. No signal here on the 60 minute other than price trading below support. 30 minute time frame chart, no topping pattern that sticks out at me, but price pulling back and testing a key area of support. So watch the 15,348.75. That is the last breakout level for the NQ. If price closes below that on the NQ, that would suggest we're headed lower. It headed lower to where? Well, the next area of support right now would be at 15,263, but that requires a close below 15,348.75 out there. So even though we've got bullish market breadth, for the NASDAQ, what you and I can see out here is that price is running into resistance. The resistance being the top of those profile levels for the longer time time frames out there, the two-hour and the uh, five-hour chart out here. And I'll be watching support levels, like even a 10-minute chart, from the Roach Mintum Indicator top and then a TD nine count bottom that is held out here. So what do we expect? I got to expect that the markets try to pull back a bit as we come into the uh, two o'clock uh, time frame when Powell uh, gives us his uh, decision out here. Let's try to pull up the ES mini charts. Uh, we've got about 30 seconds before we start going into the breakout here. Let's see what we can find here. I'm just looking for resistance levels to be able to share with you. Does anything stick out? And if we take a look at the uh, four hour time frame chart, 4505 is the top of its profile out there. The two hour chart has a Rhodes indicator bottom. Price is above the top of that profile. So that's actually suggesting to you and I that price wants to make a further move higher out here. I don't have any other topping patterns per se when I take a look at the ES Mini. Nonetheless, I think it's more logical that we see markets kind of pull back, get towards break even, as we come into the two o'clock time frame, what I can't share with you is a topping pattern in the ES mini charts as we speak right now. See Rhodes with TFNM. We're gonna take a look at the XLE for Hector Silver for Dizzle. And I would like to hear from you. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream.
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Uh, folks, so we're take a look at the charts here for this is actually the daily chart for the energy sector, the XLE. The question uh, that comes in from Hector is he's asking and first he's asking, was yesterday's candle a bearish engulfing candle? And he's looking for that that confirm a sell the D point pattern. So that's in essence the question. First answer. The, so the answer to your question, Hector, is no, that is not a bearish engulfing candle. In order for it to be a bearish engulfing candle, one, price must be in an uptrend. So to a certain extent, we could say that price was still in an uptrend here uh, as of uh, yesterday. Um, but what the bearish engulfing candle needs to engulf or wrap around is not a red-bodied candle. And if you take a look at the prior day's candle, that was a red-bodied candle, even the one before that. So it's really a bearish engulfing candle. You've got to be in an uptrend. You're going to wrap around the body of the prior candle. But it needs to be, in this case here, for a bearish engulfing candle, that prior candle needed to move to the upside. So we don't have that. What we do have is price got down and basically tested or closed just slightly below the bottom of its profile out there, and the bottom of the profile being 91.43. Now, there's a number of different A to B equals CD patterns that are out here. So let's start drawing those in there. And as price releases more information to you, you draw the new pattern. So, for example, the A point is going to remain the same here. And for that, we're going to use the uh, June 23rd uh, swing point low. So the first A to B equals CD. The B point would have been the high from July 3rd, a pullback for two days into July 6. And there's your 1 to 1, 1 to 1.272, 6182, and 2.618. Okay, that's one. A to B equals CD. Let's draw in another one. And I'll just simply draw them in one at a time out here. We'll go ahead and use that June 23rd low. We'll use the high out here from July 13th and a retracement down in July 17th. There's your, again, your price projection levels. Now, there's another A to B equals CD. Now, I haven't checked to see if they're confirmed or not. They don't always have to be confirmed in order for them to come to fruition. This last one, though, we will go ahead and we'll check it out. This is a larger A to B equals CD, and it would look like this. So give me a moment here. We're going to use, again, that same A point, the low from July, June 23rd. The B point now is going to be the high from August 11th, the C point out here from August 23rd. Now, that one-to-one -one price projection would get us up into 99.15. Now, the B point that we used out here, the high of August 11th, generated volume of 23 million shares. When that was passed... It was passed with 24 million shares. So the XLE on this larger A to B equals CD has a confirmed 
uh, price projection at the 99.15 level, if that's going to take place, obviously price needs to remain with inside its profile. So you're looking for a close day about above 91.43, the bottom of that profile level. If it doesn't close above, it doesn't negate the A to B equals CD pattern. The answer there is no, it does not. But in order to negate this pattern, price would have to close below 31.10 out there. And if close below 31.10, there might be a different A to B equals CD that we would draw in here. Now, this retracement, this B to C retracement, is less than a 0.382. It's at least it's 31%. Oftentimes, when you get about a 0.382 or maybe slightly less than that, what happens is this turns out to be more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. That's what's coming from the daily time frame chart. Let's switch over, take a look at the uh, white background charts out here and see what kind of information we can provide to Hector and Patty here as we take a look at the XLE charts. Now, what we can see here is that we also had a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. And that uh, trigger needs a bearish reversal candle. Well, we have not seen a bearish reversal candle since then to confirm that top. What we also have out here is we do have a wave seven signal out there. So that is a potential for a uh, top out here. And if price does close again today below the bottom of that profile, Hector and Patty, 91.43, odds would then favor that price may want to make a run to its breakout area. That's at 87.54. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart last week confirmed a TD nine count top. In order to negate that pattern, price must close above 93.69. What should take place is price should pull back to test support. The first level of support in light sweet crude for its weekly time frame is 90 bucks even Steven, the top of that weekly profile. If price can get below there, then it would be the oscillator and change line that would be the target. And right now that's printed out at 88.90. So the XLE has got a definite confirmed top. The XLE on the weekly basis, the XLE on a monthly basis is taking on a prior TD nine count top. Price would need to close above on a monthly basis 93.31 to negate that signal. Now there's still resistance up above that at 94.71, but to negate that TD nine count top from back in June of last year, was it June or July? It was June of last year. Price needs to close above that high. Now, what else we want to take a look at in trying to understand the XLE? Well, what we want to really take a look at is what's going on in light speed crude. Why do we want to do that? Well, I'm going to change panels here. I'll show you the exact reason why. And that exact reason is going to be because of the correlation that the energy sector has with regard to light speed crude. The top panel of this chart is light speed crude. The bottom or the center panel is the XLE. And below that is the correlation. Bars above zero have a directional correlation. So we know that we've got a topping pattern on a weekly basis. We've got prior resistance from a top on the monthly basis. The daily a wave seven top that's uh, in place out there. Does that mean the XL that's on the XLE? Is the XLE going to head lower? Well, I would say if we can confirm that Lightspeed Crude is going to head lower, then I would say, yeah, we've got the signal that the energy sector is going to head lower as well. So now let's go ahead and switch panels again. Let's go back and let's take a look at Lightspeed Crude. So if you give me a moment, which you don't really have a choice, we'll get back. Those are going to be the XLE charts. We're going to switch these over to Lightspeed Crude. And we'll take a look. Oh, I know what we're going to do. We're going to do the larger panels. I'm going to change different screens out here. So let's take a look at the bigger picture. To do that, I need to change screens out here because right now you're looking at gold and silver. I don't want to do that. Not that I don't want to look at them, but this is the chart that I wanted to take a look at. So it's the upper set of panels that we're looking at out here. You've got the yearly chart. Over on your uh, left, we're trading above last year's close. That's bullish. Trading above last year's high would be very bullish. The monthly chart. Price right now is trading above bearish structured profile resistance. And that's at 87.43. It's only the 20th. But if, in fact, we get a close above 87.43, that would be a bullish signal on a monthly time frame for late sweet crude. In the case of Lights Recruit on a weekly time frame, what it's doing is trading above profile. It's trading above uh, its green oscillator and change line. It is very likely targeting resistance. And resistance is that prior Rhodes momentum indicator top against the November contract you and I are looking at. And that price point is 94.34. Hector and Patty, if we see Lights Recruit close above 94.34, I can guarantee you, 
as much as I can guarantee anything, that the XLE will also follow suit and will be trading higher. If we take a look at the daily time frame, what we don't have out here with regard to the daily time frame is any kind of a top. Yes, yesterday was a bearish shooting star candle. It just sets up a resistance point. But there is no confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. It just hasn't occurred yet. So I don't have a topping pattern. Yes, there's resistance at yesterday's high because that was a bearish shooting star. That's at 92.43. What we can see so far, the pullback today has been nothing more than a test and rejection at least that was 1125 of its green oscillator and change line. That means that conditions here are bullish period, plain and simple. However, there is a new profile. Why aren't the profiles showing up here? Well, let's uh, change that. Let's get, add those out here. This should show the new profile as well. Let me uh, get down there and add that indicator. Sorry about that. It has boxes. And let's change that to uh, each price change out here. And there you go. So we have uh, what, what Lights Recruit did today. It tested both the bottom of this new bullish structured profile. That's at the 89.28 level, straight above its green oscillator and change line. The daily conditions out here still remain bullish. So what's Lights Recruit? It's bullish for the daily. It's bullish for the weekly. It's bullish for the monthly. And it's pretty much bullish for the yearly time frame. Watch Lights Recruit as well if you're trading the XLE. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, folks. Let's get to our next request. This is coming in from Dizzle inside the Tiger's Den. Let's take a look at the silver out here. So we've got our multi time frame uh, charts out here. Dizzle, if we take a look at the daily time frame, you'll see a nice TD nine count bottom that formed on September 14th that was then uh, finalized on September 15th. Price right now is taken on resistance. That's the top of its daily profile. That's a 2374. You'll want to watch that at day's end. If price closes above that, that's going to suggest that silver wants to continue to move higher. Its next higher level, coming from the daily time frame, Dizzle, would get us up to the 2522 area. That's a TD nine count breakdown level. So at day's end, watch the 2374. Now, as I look at the intraday charts out here, do we have to be worried about as you get to a resistance level on the daily time frame, 2374? If there's going to be a top there, we should see some topping signals on the intraday charts. Turns out, that on the 60-minute time frame chart, it completed a TD nine count top. The price right now on an hourly basis is traded above that high. Doesn't matter at 11:31. What's it trade in at 12 o'clock? And if price closes above 23.78, 23.785 to be exact. Then that will have negated that signal, and that will suggest a further upside move. It's a 60-minute time frame, Dizzle. That is the only one on an intraday basis of the time frames that I'm looking at that shows any kind of a topping signal. So I pay attention to the daily profile level. I would be paying attention to the 60-minute time frame chart for silver out there. So I hope that that helps you out and provided you with the information that you needed. If not, just write back to me, and uh, we'll get you what you were looking for. So... That says, let's go take, well, look, perfect. I wasn't sure where I was going to go, whether I was going to go to Bogart Dog's Google or Johnny D's GDX. But instead, we're going to go to the default, which is uh, taking a look at what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index via a review of the euro, the yen, and the pound out here. Looking for any kind of uh, clues from the market before Powell uh, gives his speech today. So as we take a look at the euro, this is with regard to the U.S. dollar index that we're looking at out here. With regard to these are the three components that make up about 80-some percent of the U.S. dollar index. What the euro has done, the euro completed, we talked about this yesterday, the, curl, the euro completed a buy the D point pattern. It did that when it generated this three river morning star candle formation. That was candle formation between uh, September 14th and September 18th out there. Price right now is above its oscillator and change line. It is red. It has struggled to get above that level. It closed above 1.068 today, which suggests a further move higher or otherwise a weakening of the U.S. dollar index. Remember, the U.S. dollar index has got that new profile that formed, and it has support down at 104.35. So that's an area you'd want to be watching on the U.S. dollar index as well. I would say the price target, if in fact the euro today is able to close into its most recent swing point, that would mean a close above 1.0705, price ought to go target 1.0769. If price can get above that, the next area of resistance would be come from the high of August 30th, and that would be out at 1.0945. On a yen standpoint, there's a road momentum indicator signal that is present. Right now at 11.33, it's a bearish shooting star candle. I have no idea if that's the candle that it will look like at day's end. If it were to be a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a road momentum indicator top. That would suggest price would be lower. That would really suggest that the yen would get stronger, the dollar would get weaker. If we look at the Great British Pound, the Great British Pound yesterday albeit small because the prior day's body was a small bodied candle, but yesterday's candle wrapped around the prior day's body candle. This would be a bearish, a bullish engulfing. When Hector and I and you were taking a look at the XLE, we were looking for a bearish engulfing. This was a bullish engulfing candle. Let me just simply spread out the uh, chart so we're all looking at the exact same thing out here. Let me expand it this way. You can see the bullish reversal candle. Now, We've got a bottom. We've got a buy the D point bottom inside the Great British Pound. But as you can see in looking at this chart, if the pound is going to have anything more than a counter trend move, we need to see a close above 1.242 or thereabouts. That number is going to change as price moves higher and lower out there. But a close above that red oscillator and change line would say the pound wants to get stronger, the dollar wants to get weaker. If we were going to make the prognostication as of 1134, we'd say prepare for the U.S. dollar to get weaker. However, we'd also say, Watch that 104.35 level, the bottom of that new profile that, in fact, has formed out here. Why would we say watch that? Well, because if price closes below that, let me switch panels now. Give me a moment. We looked at this yesterday, but I want to relook at it with you again today. If price closes below the bottom 
of that daily profile. And you can see coming off of the lows from back here in July, we have seen no closes below the bottom of a daily profile. We had a couple of tests of it back in the August time frame, but no closes below it. So if we did see a close below 104.35, what that would be signaling to you and I is that we have a change in trend. And then we'd have to go take a look at other possible areas for where price might head to. But right now, let's just you, let's just keep it uh, pretty simple with regard to today's activity. And what you're really going to be doing is you're going to be paying attention to that with regard to the day's activity as it applies to the impact that we'll have on the equity markets, on gold and silver, and the GDX. Hey, that was a nice segue, wasn't it? Because we had a request from Johnny D to take a look at the GDX. So that was a nice segue. Let's get over to those GDX charts out here. Let's uh, turn over to the white background charts. We'll pull those up. And Johnny uh, is long. So with regard to the GDX, what we have right now, the GDX is taking on a prior swing point. And if it can close above that prior swing point, that's a swing point from right here on August the 30th. If it can close above that, it'll set up an A to B equals CD pattern. So it being the high of that candle session, the high of that candle session is $30 even, Stephen. We're trading right now at $29.97 on my charts that are up to the second out there. Here, this white background chart shows 30.04. Doesn't matter where it's trading right now. Where's it trading at 4 o'clock? If it closes above 30 bucks, you then will have triggered an A to B equals CD. Does it have volume behind it? Well, the volume on that trading session, August 30th, was 14.5 million shares. Today, you've done 6 million shares in two hours of trading. Does it have the volume? It absolutely does have the volume today. So Johnny D, what you're looking for is you're looking for price to take out that swing point high with volume. Now that's the good news. Sometimes good news also has bad news. And the bad news is, Right now, you've got bar number eight of a TD nine count. 90% of the time, when the GDX or any instrument forms a confirmed top or bottom that is on candle number eight, it goes on to successfully complete that pattern. 10% of the time, it doesn't. So this could be a 10%er. But right now, the beauty of what you're looking at is, hey, you want to take out that swing point. The bummer is, well, you could get a TD nine count top that forms between today and today's Wednesday and Friday out there. Let's look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows that price is trading above its oscillator and change line. It's also trading with inside its bullish structured profile. If on Friday, price can close above 29.78 or thereabouts, that's again that oscillator and change line. It'll change as price moves up and down. But let's just use 29.80 as a guideline out there. That would then suggest to move up to 32.36. That's what that would suggest. That could be over time because of the potential for a TD9 count top inside of the GDX. But one of the things that we know for certain or relatively certain, much like the XLE and the uh, Lightspeed Crude are directly correlated, so too with regard to gold and the GDX out there. So we really got to pay attention to what Goldilocks is doing, not just pay attention to the GDX patterns. But overall, things look very good today on September 20th. And maybe you get a further rally for the next couple of days. Maybe it just completes that A to B equals CD, and then you get some kind of a pullback. So Johnny D., I hope that that helped you out with regard to the GDX. We get back to this break. Let's take a look at Google for Bogart Dog Inside the Tiger's Den. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our next question out here. Next question coming in from Bogart Dog inside the Tigers. They want to take a look at Googly one. And if we take a look at Google right now, uh, what we've got is you've got a Roach Mintum indicator top uh, that will be confirmed today as long as we get this bearish engulfing candle. And that's what we have present at the moment. Uh, prices traded with inside its uh, profile. Now, we can see in the case of Google, Bogart, that price trade above the top of its bearish structure daily profile for more than two consecutive sessions. Did it for four. That says if this is just a counter trend move to the downside, price will find support right around 136.47 or 136.28 or thereabouts right now. So watch that 136.47 level. Because even if we get the top, the confirmed top today, and we've got a wave number seven top, I see letter G out there. But even if we get the confirmed Roach Mintum indicator top, if price doesn't close below 136.47, I'm not talking 136.45 or something like that. If it uh, closes below one, if it doesn't close below that, it, it could just still be just a counter trend move to the downside. Now, that's especially true when we look at the weekly chart, because on the weekly chart, you can see A to B equals CD patterns. There are at least two or three different A to B equals CD patterns that we could draw in there. What we don't have is we don't have a confirmation of a top. What, what do we need there? We need a bearish reversal candle. Not that we can't get it at week's end, but we don't have that certainly at Wednesday at 1143. And we don't have any other kind of topping signal. Price is trading above resistance, both the top of its profile and its green oscillator and change line. On a weekly basis, if you're an intermediate term trader out there, dog, well, this is bullish, period, end of story. And if we look at the monthly chart, the monthly chart, which has a beautiful TD9 count bottom, price is trading above profile, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line, it too is bullish. So longer term, the signal we're getting from Google is it does want to make a move up to the 152.10 level. The daily time frame is saying we might have a timeout. Now, that timeout, even if we do get a close below 136.47, could just be a move back to the bottom of that profile. That's at 134.36. If price were to close below that, that would then be telling us that the retracement is going to be deeper. And the price target would be where it broke out from, where price broke out from. And that was at 128.04. So those are the steps that I would take a look at. We can take a quick peek here at the 30-minute time frame chart. On a 30-minute basis, what do we see? What we see out here is a Roach Mintum indicator top. 
We see an A to B equals CD to the downside and price trading below one breakout level. The A to B on a 30-minute chart out here looks like this. Here's A to B. Let's go ahead and just simply move that over to the C point. The C point is going to be the highest level after we form that uh, B point out there, the highest high that takes place. That's where you would simply attach this to. That would become this candle session. Or it looks like it's that candle session right there. And now you can see on the 30-minute on the basis, we've achieved the one-to-one. -one. Now, the C to D leg out here, which we're in, is on the very left-hand side of that angle. We use the exact same angle that formed A to B as we do for C to D. This says that it should be more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D, but you want to be on the lookout for a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, well, then what you're going to see out here is at least a counter trend or a rally attempt. And that rally attempt would get us up towards the 137-ish area out there. But right now, we don't have a confirmation of a rally attempt. In order to get that, you need to see a 30-minute bullish reversal candle. So, Bogart, I hope that provided you with the information you're looking for on the googly one. And thanks so much for the request. Dan O writes in. He says, Dan, Steve, thoughts on the intraday Carvana, 10 or 15 minute or 30 or 60 minute, please. Okay. So to do that, Dano, what I need to do, and it's going to take just a little bit of time, but we're going to do it. Uh, first, I've got to find it. So it's going to be radio show charts, multi time frame. Okay, here we go. So now these have got to populate, unfortunately, uh, before I can go ahead and put in the new symbol of Carvana. But this will give us our 15, our 30, and our 65-minute uh, uh, time frame uh, charts out there. I might even have a 10 minutes somewhere, and I don't see one. So right now it's going to populate the Microsoft charts, but we're getting Carvana, CVNA, right now. Jeez, oh, please. CVNA. Okay, let's do that. Let's see if that works. Let's get over here. Let's get rid of that. Come on, get rid of that. Yay, yay. Hmm. Okay. Now it should now it should load up here. So in a moment we will have the uh, Carvana charts. I don't have any other requests uh, that I see either by email or inside the Tiger's Den. And if that's the case, then we'll talk sake because there were a couple of questions that came in. So I wanted to be able to direct people uh, to that. I was going to use that for the last segment. We've got about three minutes left. So here we take a look at a 15 minute chart here, Dan, for Carvana. Let's get that first time frame that you're looking for. What do we see? I see price trading below profile. And a red oscillator and change line, as long as those conditions remain, price should go target the low from 11.30 yesterday morning. That's at 46.01. The volume there was 829,000 shares as you were coming down into it. It was with, this is on the last 30-minute bar, it was with 285,000 shares. So it's come down with lighter volume. But watch that oscillator and change line. As long as price remains below it, a further uh, move lower would be likely. You get back above it, well, that changes the picture. 30-minute chart out here. We are also below profile. And potentially, oh, well, we closed below profile on that last 30-minute bar. The profile level that you're watching here on a 30-minute time frame is going to be 46.72. Price closes below that. Odds favor we go test the lows from yesterday. What happens if we get below that on a 30-minute basis? Well, then the next price target area would be 44.45. That's the 30-minute time frame chart. Let's take a look at a 65-minute chart out here. The 65-minute chart. Shows price consolidating with inside its profile right now. It says on the 65 minute, which would be 1140, that would be the next candle. If there's a close below 4672, that too suggests some lower price. Now, you also asked about a 10 minute time frame chart. So let's do this here. I don't need a 30 minute on this chart. Uh, I don't know why I've got that. So let's change this to 10 for you. Uh, so this, uh, the tools that I use, folks, they work for every time frame. Hey, whether we choose a minute or not, the only thing I've got to do here because the oscillator and chain, well, let me just do this here. Let me just uh, change it to uh, load up the uh, template uh, so that it matches everything. So on a 10 minute basis, there we go. And now we'll have an accurate chart. So on a 10 minute basis, what you don't like is this have formed a TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top is now taking price below its breakout level of support of 47.05. That's really should have held. So this, too, is suggesting that it may make a move down into that low from yesterday at about 11.30. Dano, does that provide you with the information that you were looking for for Carvana for its intraday time periods? I hope it does. But if not, let me know. And uh, ah, good. You like it because you are uh, short. So there you go. And you know what to be able to look at. All right, so that takes care of all those questions that have come in here. Now, there are a bunch of questions, people, not a bunch, there are about three or four. People wrote in and said, hey, I'd like to try Saki. 
The problem is when they go to restaurants, and I get this. The the, the common theme was when I go to restaurants, I, I, they don't have any they don't have any knowledge about sake, and uh, when they look at some of the prices, they're like, why would I spend that much money when I might not like it? And that's really a good valid point. That's one of the reasons why uh, sake is uh, not as popular as really it should be out there. It is a wonderful beverage. It's a wonderful adult beverage. Here's what I would suggest that you do. The first thing I would go to, you should at least try this sake. And these are beautiful sakis, and they're very reasonably priced. I would go to High Time Wine Cellars. They're out in uh, Costa Mesa, California. They ship to most most uh, states will allow you to have products shipped in. Florida absolutely allows you to ship in. And go and put up Desai. Just put up Desai, D-A-S-S-A-I. Great uh, uh, brewer of uh, sake. And really what you're looking at, depending on your price point, Here's what I would suggest. I would suggest if your price point is such that do you want the best sake for $64.98 or to Desai 23. If your budget is a little bit lower, go down to either Desai 39, the Desai 39 out here, right here, you can see the price, $34.98. If that's still a little bit pricey, go down to the Desai 45, $25.98. All those are Junmai Daiginjos. I'll tell you that that means when we get back from the break, but what that really means is pure. That's what you want when you drink sake. You're right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Now back to our sake section of today's uh, show out here. So the Sai 23 in the upper right-hand corner if you watch us on Tiger TV. This is a sake where each rice kernel has been milled down 77%. Um, which is uh, which is which is really great. The, the 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 biggest I've seen things milled down to is one percent out there. Uh, while we were in uh, uh, Japan, uh, we had a couple bottles that were milled down to ninety seven percent. The point is that the more you mill down that rice kernel, the the more pure that the uh, flavor. Sasaki's basically it's really two things: it's water and the rice. There's a third thing that uh, can be added, and that would be alcohol-type fillers. If you stay with Junmai, so when you're looking at a menu, you stay with any sake that says Junmai, you will not have those fillers in there. Whether it's Junmai Ginjo, Junmai Dai Ginjo, just Junmai, doesn't matter. So that's one thing you'd really like to be looking for. Now here, on the Sasai 23, it's 65 bucks from uh, High Times wine sellers out there. When you go into a restaurant and you see it on the menu, it's going to be 250 Now, the wonderful thing about our 225 250 there's a place I go to, they charge 300 bucks for it. I bring my sake to those places. In the state of Florida, the laws allow you to bring your own. The restaurant can refuse that, but most of the restaurants here, 99% of them, let you bring it in. They provide and they charge you a corkage fee, usually 25 30 bucks or what have you. Well, I had 30 bucks to $65 or at 95 dollars drinking a beautiful sake out there not having to pay that price that's on those menus now um who wrote in jimmy d said hey he's got a desire for the unfiltered sake so if you like unfiltered sake why don't you try this desai uh, 39 out here uh this is a uh, oh, wait, wait where's the oh here it is it's desai 45 this is a nigori this is an unfiltered sake now an unfiltered sake says there's still rice residue that's why it's white in that in that bottle it's because there's still some white rice residue in there try the more pure stuff as well out here but this is the easy way to taste sake you got to drink it with uh, you got to drink this while you're eating fish though that's the best way folks stay tuned for great programming i'll see you on terrific thursday enjoy your wednesday